Welcome to When Creativity Knocks All-Star Designers Spring Series. Yep, my good friend Cindy's up next and she's going to show you how to make a really cute flower pot with some lovely little flowers. <music> Spring has sprung and Cindy is going to show us how to make this fabulous floral arrangement. The first thing I did was went to the local dollar store again and got these great Love it. ceramic pots. But I wanted to dress them up a little bit. And one of my favorite techniques to do lately on ceramic and glass is to etch. And I put this little picket fence uh, stencil from um, DecoArt. I love them. They're reusable. And I just put it on the pot. And then etching cream is really easy to use. I'm literally, you just apply it over the open end areas mm -hmm. of the stencil and then you let it set about 15 minutes and then you just wash it off. Now you can take the extra cream and you can put it right back in the bottle so mm -hmm. it's very little waste. And I did the same thing on all three sides. I spaced it out evenly and did it around the pot. It's real subtle, but I really it's like it a subtle, lot. But it gives a, you can see it. It gives right. it a little bit of extra detail. So this one is all etched, and then to give us a base to put our flowers in once we make mm -hmm. our mixed media flowers, I'm just using a smooth foam ball, and I'm just hot gluing it into the bottom of that pot, and it gives us a solid Great. base. Great, and I like you're using the round one because it fits so nice. You don't, you don't have, have to do have a to bunch trim of cutting. Yeah, everything else. Yeah, and it just fits down inside. So our pot is almost ready, and I will show you how we do our flowers, and then we'll finish up our pot. So to make our mixed media flowers, the first thing I did was went to my writ dye. And I love to over dye fabrics. So oh, so I you're dyeing? Oh! Yeah, I'm just over dyeing. I go to the local Goodwill and I buy blouses and all sorts of things in fabric I like and I reuse the fabric. Because I go, I really like this yellow fabric. <laughs> yeah, it just started as regular, any color, and then I just over dye it following the instructions that come with it. Aren't you smart? And you can customize the colors. And to make the stems for our flowers, I also love to dye wood. So skewers can be dyed with the green I know, dye. I totally love doing that. And it's super easy. So that's how we got the color scheme that we wanted. And now I'm going to show you how to make the individual different flowers. We'll start with this yellow one, and I made about five or six of these one inch squares. Okay. And I just rough cut them because I like the feathery edge on them. So I would cut it and then tear it to get yeah, that. Yeah, I love to do edge. that too. And to form the petals with the squares, I literally just took it, pinched them, and em. I put a little bit of hot glue right there, and then pinched each one so that I had this type of petal. Mm -hmm. And then I just started one on top of the other in the very center. Again, I used a little bit of hot glue and just added them till I had the kind of flower that I wanted. To make the center of that flower, I hot glued one of these great cracked marble type beads. I know, I just love that. Yeah, they've, if you really, really great interest to have dimension to them. And I hot glued it to the center uh -huh. of the flower and then oh, I added I use mm -hmm. some of these chipped beads. And again, I hot glued them. And I left them right on the string they came on. I didn't pull them all off and individually. I just snipped it and hot glued it on. Oh, that makes it like so that. much easier. So then you end up with that type of center. To make the leaves for this flower, I used Macon's clay. And they're leaf push mold which is again their push molds are super easy yeah, to they're use. really fun to use and the clay is so soft now there are a couple ways to push mold you can just over push and then just trim it but i like to really just kind of get it into you the know mold. i found that too i pretty much shaped it because you can move the clay back into and itself then you don't have to trim it all off yeah. and all of that so so you just push it into the leaf that you want and they're flexible so it's yeah. going to pop right out. And to place them onto the dyed skewers, I kind of pulled down the edge a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
and placed it on the skewer and then I pushed that clay around. So it's kissing itself. It's kissing itself and it, <laughs> it kind of holds your leave in place. Which is great because you don't have to glue it or anything. You don't have to add mm -hmm. any additional glue. And then I just added the other one on the opposite side. Love it. And they dry and they stay flexible. So that was the leaves for that one. And then I just glued the flower to the top. So that's our first one. For our second flower, which is this one. I actually used a flower die cut and die cut the, the pieces mm -hmm. and then they kind of overlap. I put some glue here Okay. and then I gotcha. continued with the petals. You just stacked them. I was them. here I mm -hmm. stacked them. And then I wanted to add my little blingy center. So to make the center of this flower, I used a one inch smooth foam ball. I added a little bit of hot glue and pushed that skewer in to hold it in place. Okay. And you know it's going to be centered on there, but I did push this back a little bit. You'll see why I've kind of got it on there mm -hmm. in a second. So to add the gold microbeads to our smooth foam ball, I'm actually using the hot glue. You're using the hot glue? I'm using oh, okay. the hot glue. And about two thirds of the way on the ball, I'm really, and I'm using the tip of the gun to spread it out a little bit, but okay. you want it good and thick and gloppy. Gloppy is the word I use, yeah. I like that word, gloppy. Gloppy. Well, that is really gloppy. Yes. And this has a rubber tip on it, so it's kind of cool because you can yep. smooth it pretty easy, too. Now, while it's still hot like that, you're going to dip it right into those microbeads and roll it oh, around I a little bit. Oh, I love that. It's like frosting. And then push it right up onto your flower. Oh, that's genius. I love that. So it's holding your flower in place, and then almost instantly those microbeads are dry. Now for this one, for the stem, I did go ahead and Oops, sorry. used... Oh, fun. They come like that. Yeah, these great beads. I, they just I thought you wired them. <laughs> yes, I'm so skilled. <laughs> I just thought they looked like leaves. They do look like leaves. So oh, you just slid them up I the... Just, I, I took them off the thing, and I did have to make the hole with a jewelry plier just a, a little, little bit larger. And I slid them onto the skewer. Cool. I like that. And I just, I mixed the colors up and, and did a couple of them in some places and a single one in another. So it's adding just another whole element of different texture and design to yeah. the mixed media flowers. It's really cool. Okay, it's you've got one more to go. One more flower. Now this one is sort of a tulip kind of flower. To make this one, again, smooth foam ball. This one's about an inch and a half. I kind of like as they have holes in them. They must yes. take them off for the molds that way, but yeah, it works really great place for to this. Put the skewer very easily. And I cut these. They're about two inch squares. Okay. And I started. I put a little glue on the bottom. And kind of pushed it on. Okay. And then I put a little glue on each side. Oh, so you're, I could see your tulip petal forming. And then I did the same thing on this side. Okay. And then I did the same thing on this side. So you... And then I went in with an outside layer. Mm -hmm. Same technique, just an outside layer. So how many layers did you have? There's four, there's eight petals. There's okay. two layers and it kind of gives you a ruffled tulip mm -hmm. kind of effect. And because I'm such a texture junkie, that one I didn't glue clearly, I wanted to add some dimension to the center. So I'm using some nice bright Macon's clay, which I'm actually extruding. Oh, I know that's really fun. I use yeah, that I thing. That is great. Clay. I've already filled it. It just unscrews and you put the clay in the barrel. And it's very easy. You can see I'm just using two fingers. It just extrudes right out. Look how and fun you want that is. A fairly long piece because that way you don't have to stop and start once you start coiling it. Now you could put a little dab of hot glue just to start holding it in place, but mm -hmm. it will really kind of dry to the smooth foam. Mm -hmm. But this will hold it while you start. And I just so you're just going it. as far down so you as can't. As far down as it, it'll. Yeah, okay. And I just coiled it. I just continued coiling it on itself. And then when you got to the top, did you need to put a little dot of glue too? Again, you can put okay. a little dot of the glue just to hold it in place while it dries. And it really held very well to the smooth foam. 
Wow. And for the leaf for this one, again, I used the green clay. I just rolled it up and I freeform cut it with a craft knife. Same technique, I kind of rolled it on mm -hmm. so it's like a tulip leaf. Oh, this is really fun. And I stuck them down into that smooth foam ball and, and added some of the Spanish moss. Mm -hmm. And then our finishing touch was just a little piece of yellow ribbon and these absolutely adorable. I know, those little, little charms, charms are so cute. It's a little rake and a little shovel, and I just think they're so cute, and they're such a perfect little accent to this little spring home decor, topiary type project. Well, you hit this one out of the park and right into the flower bed. <laughs> okay, I have to tell you, I really like the gloppy glue and beads. That was like a brilliant idea, my you darling. Know I like to combine textures and different elements. So. She's like crazy with texture, and I never would have thought to dye fabric like that either. Over dyeing is one of my favorite techniques. Yep, you are good at doing that. <laughs> hey, why don't you like us on Facebook and pin us on Pinterest. And follow us on Twitter. And be sure to go to the homepage of our website and sign up to receive our weekly newsletter. Then you'll be eligible to win one of our weekly boxes full of products from our sponsors. And watch for our next episode next week.